Now you have to give them the big promise, right? Remember in the first contact, you promised them an irresistible offer. You're going to help them increase sales. And this is something that even the professional salespeople in Vietnam are still doing it wrong. Take effing action, put it together, and subscribe to Tom Penn's channel on YouTube now. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's crazy. The third step is presentation. You found the customer, you make the first contact, you set up the appointment. Now you have to do the appointment. Can some people give me ideas as to where, where, not, not how, where? You have that appointment. They're coming in, in our office or in the coffee house. Okay. In their company, our company, coffee shop, anything else? Yes. Meeting room, Zoom or Google Meet. Zoom, online, anything else? Okay. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good list. Which one do you think is my favorite? Our company. company office. I hear our company. Good. Why? Mm -hmm. Yes, very good reason. Vietnamese customers are very careful. They're suspicious. Maybe because of the news, there's a lot of scam and fraud. So Vietnamese people are scared. They, they, uh, they don't trust easily. So if you send the customer to our office, first, they're going to see that we're on the top floor of Vietjet Plaza. We have the entire floor at the top floor. There is over 200 people working there. And it actually looks pretty nice. So immediately they will trust you. If they trust you, then it's easier to close the deal. But of course, because we're in a COVID lockdown, so we're not working in the office. So Zoom and online has to be the option now. So all your presentation and demos have to happen online today. But when the lockdown is over, I have no idea how long. When it's over, then of course, you want to invite customers to our office. And also, we're not just selling in Ho Chi Minh City. We are a Vietnam-wide company. We want to sell to businesses across Vietnam. So the only way you can sell to customers in Hanoi, in Da Nang, in Kanta, in those locations is by doing Zoom online meetings. Don't underestimate businesses outside of Ho Chi Minh City. We do a lot of businesses outside of Ho Chi Minh City. Again, I want you to think bigger because a lot of new salespeople, they only want to make 5 million dong. They only know how to eat instant noodle. Their worldview is very small. They only think about Ho Chi Minh City. And they only think about very small businesses, but there are a lot of businesses across Vietnam and they can be very big. In the past, I've hired sales girls that come into the company because they only know about their own lives. So they sell to street vendors, the vendors that sell coffee and bummy on the street. They're limited by what they know because they're poor. That's all they know. They only know street food. So they try to sell our solution to them. And I tell them it's wrong. Those businesses are too small and they don't have the money and they don't need our product. But no one listens to me. So they fail. After three months, they get zero, and then they embarrassingly, they quit themselves. So it's very important that I want you to expand. I want you to think bigger. Don't just think about Ho Chi Minh City and what you know. Think about all of Vietnam and any big business that can benefit from our products. Back to the point, our office is always the best because they see the office, they trust us. And the second reason is that if they come to the office, you are saving time because if you have to go see them, you have to motorbike there, you have to travel. That takes time and time is money. The smart salesperson gets your one meeting at two, another at three, another at four in the office so that the customer come. So you're having meeting after meeting after meeting, and you can close as many as possible. If you have to go see your customers, one is in District 2, one is in District 7, another one is in District 12, maybe one day you can only see two. Again, we're playing the numbers game. The more presentation demo you do, the more close deals you have. So now during the COVID lockdown, all your meetings are online, which is great because you can schedule two, three, four, five. I'll tell you my rules. For me, if the customer is smaller than us, then I want them to come visit me. If the customer is bigger than me, the company is bigger than my company, then I will go see them. That, but that's for me. I do that. But you decide what you want to do. Because CEOs, managing director, they're busy people too. They think like me. They want to save time. Time is money. So in order for them to save time, they will say, you come, you come. So you have to decide whether it's worth it for you to go. I don't like to go to other people's companies. I like people to come to me.
because that saves my time. And be careful about coffee shop and restaurant. Sometimes you get the crazy people because we have a lot of beautiful girls in our sales team. And there's crazy people out there. They see a beautiful girl and say, hey, come, 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 come talk to me in a coffee shop. They have no genuine interest in, in buying our product. They just want to meet the girl. So I generally don't want you to go to coffee shop restaurant because usually they're not serious. Because if they are a big real company, they don't have offices. They have to meet a coffee shop that usually tells you something's wrong. Going to a restaurant or a coffee shop has another problem. Who pays the bill? Just don't get into those problems. So stay professional, our office or their office or Zoom. And you have to learn how to use Zoom. You don't know how to use Zoom. You cannot close anything now because now all the meetings are on Zoom. So learn these tools. They're easy. They're so simple. They're so easy to learn. Okay. So you have a Zoom meeting and then they're online, you're online. Now you have to give them the big promise, right? Remember in the first contact, you promised them an irresistible offer. You're going to help them increase sales. And this is something that even the professional salespeople in Vietnam are still doing it wrong. In fact, the more professional they think they are, they think they're awesome. They're great. They make mistake even more so. Because I go to those sales calls with them and I see these mistakes and I just want to choke them to death. Basically, they talk to the customer like, our product is the best. We can do this. We can do that. Check this out. We can change this. We can do that. Basically, it's like, we're the best. My dick is so big. Remember what we said. People hate salespeople. When you start selling so hard, telling people how big your dick is, they just don't want to talk to you. Because what they see is that they're, you are trying to get something out of them because they say you only want them to pay the money so they get the money. When they think that, it's not a good relationship. It's like a confrontational relationship. So it's very important if you get to this point in your sales cycle that you don't sell hard. No one cares how big your dick is. Instead, you ask them a lot of questions. You want to research the customer? Now's the time. You ask them questions about their business. And you bring a book and you write it down. Now is the time to do research. They're in front of your face and they can give you the, all the answers that you want. Not from their website, from their mouth. And when you're asking the questions, two things happen. One, you're in control of the relationship. Remember this, write it down. In a relationship, it's the person asking the questions that's in control not the person answering the questions. And two, when you ask questions, you're trying to help the customer. You're trying to identify their problem, their pain, so that you can help them. So now you're on the same side. Everybody understands so far, right? Yes. Okay, let me give you an example. This could work for any industry, whether you're selling real estate or anything. In real estate, you ask, what kind of house do you like? How many bedrooms? Is it for your family? Is it for your grandparents? You, know, you ask a lot of questions. But we're in e-commerce. Questions might be something like this. So Mr. Fook, do we currently have a website? Yeah, we have a website. And then you say, oh, that's great. Does your website today currently take payment like credit card and ATM? And Mr. Fook is like, well, we want to do it, but we don't know how. We were going to do it, but, but we haven't done it yet. Oh, okay. And you write it down. What about shipping? How do you ship your products? And then the Mr. Fook says, well, my brother ships the products for me. Hmm. What if the customers are like in other provinces? Well, we only do business in Ho Chi Minh right now. And then you say, but what if we can scale your business? Now you have customers from all over Vietnam. How are you going to ship? And Mr. Fook says, I haven't thought about it. And then you go, hmm, you write it down. And then you tell Mr. Fook, you know, we work with Gia Han Yang, Gia Han Ticking, Aha Move, uh, VM Post. And we can ship your products anywhere in 63 provinces. We have fast shippings, 30 minutes. We can ship products of any size and weight. So we can help you scale. As your business grow, you have all these shipping partners working with you. And also uh, the shipping rate is cheaper than you can get yourself because we partner with them. And Mr. Folk is like, hmm, yeah, okay. And then you continue. Do you sell on Lazada or Shopee now? Yes, Mr. Fook says yes. And then you say, how's that going? I don't know, maybe two orders a month. It's hard to sell. And then you say, yeah, I know it's hard to sell on Lazada and Shopee because there's so much competition there. Do you have to log into Lazada, update products, manage orders there? And then you log into Shopee and, and manage products and manage orders there? You should write it down, you know. These are good questions. And they, Mr. Fook says, yeah, we have to do that. And then you say, you know what? With Go Sell, we give you one interface. You manage everything in one place. You upload one product, it goes to website, mobile app, Lazada, Shopee. You update one place, update across all. Do you think that's going to save you time? Mr. Fook says, yeah, I think so. Hmm. You write it down. And then you don't stop there. You keep on asking, does Lazada, Shopee take commission from you? Yeah, they, they take 5%, 10%, whatever. You say, hmm, you get the traffic from Lazada and Shopee, but you complete the order in Go Sell. 
do you still have to pay them commission? Mr. Fook says, yeah, you're right. So it's a good idea to drive traffic from Shopee Lazada to your website. Get your customers complete orders there, right? And Mr. Fook says, yeah. So also with your own website, you can build your own brand. People remember your brand. If they buy from Lazada Shopee, they don't know who you are. You always want the customer to come back to you, not go back to Lazada because they can buy from someone else. You always want to come back to you. And then Mr. Fook is like, yeah, that makes sense. And then you don't stop. You keep going. Do you have a list of your customers? And Mr. Fook is like, uh, no. So, oh, you don't have a list of customers and you don't know what they bought from you in the past? And then Mr. Fook says, well, yeah, when they want to buy something, they just come in the store. You go, hmm, what about mm-hmm. now during COVID? Or they say, well, nobody's coming now. So imagine if you have a list of your customers and you can send them messages, you can send them email, SMS, yellow messages, and also like Facebook marketing messages in the newsfeed. If you can do that, do you think they will remember you and come back and buy more from you? The customer is like, yeah, that makes sense. How can I do that? Well, with GoSell, we have a CRM system. All the customer that contact you, buy from you, whether it's online, offline, in the store, Lazada, Shopee, website, mobile app, any customer that contact you will be in the system. And you know what they bought from you in the past. So you have their phone number, you have their email, you have their Facebook account, you have everything. So you can send them customized messages, maybe a promotion. Maybe you have a special promotion this month. Maybe you have new products this month. You can keep on sending the messages so they know about your business. They remember your business. Look, let me show you. Like you can do this and then I can find all the customers that bought from me in the last month. They spent more than 10 million down with me. I can find all those customers and I can send them a special message. Look, there's so many things you can do with GoSell. You can even send them birthday messages. If you record their birthdays, you can also send happy birthday messages to wish them a happy birthday and give them a birthday discount. And then at this point, Mr. Folk, wow, this is so powerful. Now you're in control of this conversation. You don't stop. Ask the next question. Do you have a membership program? You know, like loyalty. If they buy from you, they get points and they can use points for discount and stuff like that. If your customers can collect points, do you think they will come back and use those points and buy more from you? And Mr. Fook is like, yeah, I know. I I thought about it. I thought about like making membership cards for my customers and then they can collect points, but it's just too complicated. We have to track how many points they have. It's too complicated. So we haven't done it yet. And then you tell them, you better be writing these questions down. These are so good. These questions work. And then you say, well, with GoSell, it's so easy. Here is how you print the barcode for the member. You can make a real membership cards for your customers if you want. But you don't have to because this is their membership card. They just come in the store and you go beep and you know exactly who they are. And then they can get points. They can use discounts. All the points are tracked in the system. It doesn't matter if the customer buy online or offline. They have the same member account. They collect the same points under the same account. I'll stop there. Everyone, are these good questions or not? Yes, I think it's good enough Very because good. yeah, it's so our benefits or not the team, the, the customer need and they show us and we help um, maybe answer for them immediately. So you are driving the conversation. You're not waiting for them to say, you have to do this. You have to do that. You're not waiting for them to tell you what to do. You are asking them questions. You're guiding them. The person asking the question is in control of the conversation. If the customer is saying, can your product do this? Huh? 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 They're in control, not you. But if you're like, do you have a membership program? You're in control. Everybody understand, right? Uh, Yes. This is so powerful. (laughs) But none of you will do it when you actually do sales. I don't know why. After this training, you all become idiots. You don't do what I say. And then you fail. It's the people that do what I say that are actually making the money. Hugh Kong? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. You don't stop. You're making them feel pain. It's like you take a knife and you stab it in the heart because they are thinking to themselves, man, why did I not do that before? Everything you say is so right. But you don't stop there. You, you drive the knife in harder. The next question. How are you finding co- new customers today? Mr. Fuchs is like, uh, 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 well, COVID, there's no customer. I guess that's why I'm talking to you. Yeah, because everybody shop online. Two days ago, I bought a drum kit on the internet and it was shipped to me like in two days. The only way to buy anything now is online. You know what? People think having a website is e-commerce. No, you tell them no. Because you have a website doesn't mean that you can sell online because nobody knows about your website. You need other strategies. What do they do when they have a problem? Mr. Fook is like, hmm. Mr. Fook says, Google, they Google the problem. And you say, that's right. 
But when they Google their problem, do they find you, Mr. Fook? Are you on page one of the search result? Mr. Fook says no. But imagine if they type in the name of the product and then they find you on page one, do you think you will find more customers that way? Mr. Fook just like nod. He cannot say anything more. He's speechless. He just nod. But really, he's shitting his pants. If the room spilled funny, it's because he's shitting his pants. Meaning that poop come out of his ass and it's on his pants. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Yes. But you don't stop there. You don't stop there. He's already feel so much pain in his heart. You want to drive deeper. There's so many things I can talk about. It will take like three days. But let's say next question. What about inventory control? Like, do you know how many products you have in your store? Mr. Fook is like, well, no. Like when customer wants something, we just go look for it. So how do you know if your product runs out? If the product runs out, then you're not making money, right? Yeah. Mr. Fook says, mm, yeah. What about your employees? How do you know they're not taking your products home? If you don't count your inventory, if you don't know how many products you have in your store, how do you know you're not, your employees are not stealing from? Now, when you say that, now you hit them really hard because that's what every business owner worries about. Every business owner worries about disloyal, dishonest employees. That is the one that's going to push them over. And then you show them, you know, with GoSell, you can track your inventory. You know which products are running out. You know which one you have to order. You know which product is sold to who. So every product is accounted for. You cannot have missing product. How many stores you have, Mr. Fook? Mr. Fook says, I have three in Ho Chi Minh. I have two in Fantic. So what do you do when one store runs out of product? Mr. Fook says, then we call the other store and see if they have any. But with GoSell, you don't have to. Just by looking at the system, you know exactly how many you have in which store. And you can transfer product from one store to another. The sender and the receiver must confirm the quantity of that transfer. So you will never lose product. At this point, Mr. Fook is just nodding his head. He's like, man, I need to buy this. But you don't stop there. There's 5,000 questions you can ask. How are you managing your employees today? Maybe only the store manager can transfer product. Maybe only the staff can take order, right? You can control that all in the app. Only authorized staff can touch the money. Only authorized staff can touch the product. So you never lose any money, any product. Everything is under control. Are you selling to distributors and wholesalers? And Mr. Fook says, we want to do that. I want to contact a lot of university students and ask them to help me sell. Then you ask, how are you going to track who sold what? Look, we have a system that can track who sold what in the system so that you can pay them proper commission. If you have distributor in Hanoi, if you have somebody in Hanoi that buys your product for resale, we can track that too in our system. Where do you store your products, Mr. Fook? And Mr. Fook says, well, in, in the store, but there's really not enough space. Okay, we can solve that problem for you too. We have big, huge warehouse that you can store your products there. And when people buy, you just ship directly from the warehouse and everything is tracking the system. You see everything, you manage everything on your phone. And at this point, Mr. Fook basically is having a diarrhea in his pants. Are they good questions or not? Anybody? We still here. <laughs> you can go on and on and on, nonstop. Good questions the whole day. You don't have to tell them how big your dick is. Just ask them questions and give because them a solution. They will learn about what we do faster this way because they can relate to their own company problems. Everything you say will make sense. If you tell them well, you can make a website with 27 colors, you can add 72 pictures here, and you can add a menu here, they don't understand how does that help their business. But if you ask the questions like I did just now, they will understand and they will shit their pants. I do this if I sell. And then the customer it gets so emotional. They guess, what did I know about go sell before? True. Every time, every time the customer says to me, why I did not know about go sell before. And the next question is, how much is it? And then I tell them the price. And then they'll say, why is it so cheap? Every time I sell, they say that to me. When they say, why is it so cheap to you? That means you have done your job. They really understand what the product can do for them. Let me ask you this question. After you ask a lot of questions, they ask you about the price and then you tell them the price. They, ask, they say, why is it so cheap? What do you do next? Anybody falling asleep? No one? You're going to fail today? I'm thinking sure. They say, why is it so cheap? What do you do? Say it. Are you a duck? Apparently, they are. Miss New, say it. Yes. Uh, sorry, Mr. Tom, because my uh, connection had a problem. And I will answer that. If the customer asks, 
us uh, write the brothers in chief, we just keep silent and let them sign the contract. Yeah, that's right. So you just hand over the contract, say sign here. Can you still see my screen? So when the time's right, close the deal. Please focus. I'm not kidding about the test. Everyone will have to do it. You fail, you cannot continue. So please focus. So when the time's right, they feel the pain. They know what the product can do for them. The price is no problem. Sign now. This is where some people are very sensitive. Remember, sensitivity is poverty. They're scared to give the contract to the customer. They're scared to ask for money because they think it's impolite. But they cannot be more wrong because there's nothing wrong with giving them the contract or asking for money. If you don't do it, they don't get the benefits. If you don't do it, you don't make the money. Everybody understand? Give me an answer. Oh. This was a big problem in my company. They do everything good from finding the customer, making the first contact, doing the presentation. But when the customer is ready, they're scared. They're afraid to give them the contract. So nothing happens. So they let the customer leave and we don't close the deal. When the time is right, sign, get paid. I teach my salespeople to prepare the contract before you go meet the customer. Prepare the contract first before you go see the customer. After you ask 40 questions, they're hot, they're ready, give it to them. And then they will sign. And when they sign, they will pay. A lot of salespeople, they're scared to do it or they don't follow what I say. So they don't close deals. So finally, one person in my sales team follow what I say. They, they actually print the contract and take it to the customer and they sign. And people see it. Now everyone do it. So every day they prepare so much contracts before they go see the customer. And it works. Now we close so much more deals because we know to give them the contract at the right time. Don't say, okay, I'll send you the contract tomorrow because tomorrow they lost the interest already. Tomorrow they change their mind because they're going to go home and convince themselves why they should not do it. So you want to get them when they're hot. Everybody understand? Yes. 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 It's like when you go to the mall and you buy a dress and then next day you say, damn, that was stupid. It happens to everyone because most people are stupid. They regret their decisions, rightly or wrongly. So you want to get them when they're ready. Also, you do not want to talk about price until you finish the demo, finish the presentation. You do not want to talk about the price at the beginning of the presentation. You definitely do not talk about the price when you make first contact because they don't know what you can do, what the product can do. Any price is too expensive. Any price is too expensive because they don't know the value of the product. But after you ask 40 questions, they understand it really well then price is cheap. So you only want to talk about price when you know they fully understand what the product can do for them. If you tell them too early, they'll say, ah, too expensive, buy. They don't know what the product can do. They just think you're selling them a website. We're not a website business. We're much bigger than that. Everybody understand? Yes. Yes. Any question about the pricing? I have a question. Cái hợp đồng á, mình sẽ có những loại hợp đồng giá trị bao nhiêu em? It works smart here. You don't know what the customer will buy. So sometimes salespeople create five contracts. Depending on what they agree to, they'll give the right one. That's one, one way to do it. And the other way to do it is you leave the, the details, what they're going to buy empty, and then you fill it in at the demo. So if you meet them face to face, you're just writing what they want to buy and then put it in and then sign, sign, stamp, stamp, done. If you're doing it over Zoom, you write the contract with them in Zoom. You screen share, you write the contract with them, and then everybody agree. You'll learn about this later. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's okay. Now, in order to do the presentation and demo, you have to be the expert. You must be the expert. If you don't know the answers to your own questions, then they're not going to believe you. If your customer asks you, hey, what about this? Can your product do this? And you're like, oh, I don't know. Let me ask someone. Then, then you're not going to get the deal. You have to be the expert. Expert meaning you have the answer to all their questions and you can say it with confidence. If you answer their questions like, well, uh, I think you can do that. I, I think it's possible. Yeah, bullshit. They're not going to buy from you. In order to be that expert, you must have a good understanding of e-commerce, online marketing, and you must have good product knowledge. Now you know our product is so powerful. Our product can solve so many problems in one product. There's no other product like this. If you want to find another product like this, you have to go find many different companies, buy many different products, and all of their products add up to one product like us. And it's not as good because you have seven, eight products and they don't talk to each other. All the informations are not connected. Once the customer understand what we have, they will buy. The key here is understand. 
in order to be an expert, you have to study e-commerce, online marketing, and product knowledge. And you have to learn fast because if you don't know this, you can't sell. You cannot do presentation and therefore no commission, no deals. So the faster you learn these things, the faster you can start selling and closing deals. And we give you a lot of help. We have hundreds of videos in YouTube. We have hundreds of videos on our website for your training. We also have product training teams that do four training sessions every week. Make sure you attend them. Those trainings are super important, especially when you're new. They're online. We have sales leaders. We have product teams that will help you too. And you also have me. I'm the number one product expert here. You have any questions, you ask me. If you don't know English, ask Truk. She will translate half right. Okay, everybody? Yes. yes. I need to emphasize this. Desire to learn has to come from you, not us. If you don't want to learn, this will be very slow for you. But if you want to learn, then this can work very fast. My top salespeople, when they come into the company, the first thing they ask is, how can I get a demo account so I can try the product myself? They're motivated. They have a desire to learn. They want to know fast. When you have the desire, you'll find out how to do it. You don't have the desire, then you're not going to find out how to do it. So the salespeople that join us and they just wait for us to train them, usually those fail. The only way you will learn a product is that you want to learn it and you put in the time and effort. Any questions about product training? How many kinds of product we have? I don't want to talk about that because you haven't even passed this training yet. You may not make it. So I don't, I don't bother talking about that. Any other questions about training? or presentation or demo? I have a question that if my customer, they don't have the time to have an appointment with me, so can I uh, talk with them by phone? Okay, let me answer this question uh, this way. If they don't have time for you, what does that mean? According to Tom's training, if they say they don't have time for you, what does that mean? It means they don't interest in our products. They don't want to cooperate with us. It means that you did not deliver the key value proposition in make, make first contact because they don't think it's important enough. Remember, if they think it's important enough, they will make time. Make sense? Yes, it's correct. Okay, any other questions? Like I said, I don't want to talk about product. That's next step. I, I'm not even sure you understand the process and mindset yet. I'm talking about presentation demo. Any questions about that? Okay, so I'll summarize. When you're doing the presentation, it's always good that they come to our company, but during COVID, you Zoom online. When you demo, you're not telling people how big your dick is. You're asking a lot of questions. You're staying in control of the conversation. You're using questions to do research and you're using questions to understand their business pain point and offer them solutions. When they're ready, when they're hot, close the deal, give them the contract sign and get paid. And you never talk about price until at the end of the presentation. You never talk about the price at the beginning of the presentation and you never talk about the price when you make first contact. That's stupid. That will be a very short call. How much is it? Five million. Bye. Everybody understand? Yes. Yes. And you have to be the expert. And in order to be the expert, you must know e-commerce and online marketing and our product very, very well. In presentation demo, you also need to communicate, saying the right things. Also, tonality is very important.